It is estimated that one in seven people are neurodivergent. This means that their brain learns, receives and processes information differently. This will influence how a person acts and responds to the world around them. There are lots of different types of neurodivergence, including autism, learning difficulties, dyslexia, ADHD and tic disorders to name a few. Being neurodivergent does not mean there is something wrong with a person. It simply means their brain works in a way that is different to neurotypical people. That is, people who process the world around them in, the, in a typical way. On a bus, neurodivergence could affect somebody in a variety of ways. Some people may find it difficult to read bus timetables, work out which bus to get, and read the front of the bus as it arrives at the stop. Likewise, when boarding a bus, people may find it more challenging handling money or knowing how to use a bus pass. People with neurodivergence sometimes need more time to learn routine and behaviours such as what, what do you do when you board a bus? Some people may of a personal assistant to support them to do this. <laughs> Other challenges a person may face is understanding social cues and expectations, particularly things like knowing to move down the bus when you initially board. Furthermore, neurodivergence can affect the way in which people's senses process the world around them. Busy and noisy environments can become really overwhelming. Travelling on a bus for many neurodivergent people can be very challenging. Buses can be very unpredictable, and that combined with the challenges we've just discussed can make people feel increasingly anxious. And people will display anxiety in lots of different ways, and recognising this may help you to acknowledge and support a passenger who is anxious. Some people may use movement to help manage their anxiety, perhaps walking around, moving their hands and feet, or rocking their body or their head. For others, when they feel anxious, they may find it increasingly difficult to talk and engage with people around them. They may not be able to talk at all or be able to <coughs> engage in eye contact. And some people will respond vocally, perhaps by making loud noises, asking questions, repeating themselves, or making involuntary sounds called ticks. These are just a few examples of how neurodivergent people may feel and respond when travelling on your bus. Try to remember this if you have a passenger who is behaving differently. Do not judge or assume that a passenger is being rude or difficult. Instead, be patient, take time and think about how you can best support them. <laughs> Neurodivergence is also another example of a hidden disability, which is a disability you don't necessarily see straight away when you look at someone. And so we want to finish this by giving you a few tips and ideas that you can do to help support passengers with hidden disabilities. For some people born in the bus, it's a simple process. Whereas for others, for others, it presents more challenges. When a passenger boards the bus, be clear with what they need to do if they seem unsure. Ask, ask if they have a bus pass or explain or explain how to pay. People communicate in different ways, as we've already mentioned. Some people find it difficult to, to engage in eye contact. If a passenger is avoiding eye contact when they speak to you, don't perceive this as being rude. Likewise, some people may be unable to verbally speak when they board the bus, so don't presume that they are being rude. Instead, simply offer reassurance if they need it. Although many disabilities are visible on appearance, there are just as many that are not. It's not possible by looking at someone to know whether they have a disability. So without knowing who is who, how can you best support disabled passengers? Well, the simple answer is apply the principles that we have talked about to everyone you meet. Yeah. Act like lowering the bus, offering the ramp, saying which route you are on and waiting until everyone is seated before moving off can help all passengers. Equally, carrying that attitude of patience and tolerance is so important. 
You do not know what disabilities a person may have, nor what they've had to do to be able to navigate to get onto your bus today. So having an accepting and patient attitude makes all the difference. There may be a few indicators, however, that a person has a disability less visible. Firstly, so, some people wear the sunflower lanyard or hidden disability lanyard. They are a simple indicator that they have some form of disability. And it's a sunflower um, lanyard which if you're comfortable, because I know some people don't want people coming up to them and saying like asking them what their in di invisible disability is, but um, I think it's quite good. So I wear this and I also have a little card saying I've got epilepsy. Secondly, some people may use things like access cards or fisted assistance to quickly communicate their accessibility requirements to a driver. They will probably show you these when they first get on the bus alongside their bus pass or payment method. So familiarise yourself with the different types of communication cards out there so that you can quickly understand what each card means. Finally, many disabled people use a disabled bus pass. So if a passenger is using one of these, it is a clear way to know that they are disabled. If you see someone with one of these, Simply ask when they are born in the bus if there is anything you can do to support them on the bus. It's not, it's not rocket science. And as we said, each of these ways gives you an indicator that someone might have a disability, but it does not show you everyone who's disabled. People may choose not to wear sunflower lanyards or use access cards. Um, and not every disabled person has a concession pass. So be aware of these indicators, but remember, they do not include everybody. Thank you so much for listening to our disability awareness sessions, having bus drivers actively engage in wanting to make bus travel more inclusive and accessible, like, is so important. And just you guys being here today and listening, you're already helping us kind of fight towards that mission. So thank you from both of us and from everybody who's taken part 